Bye. Bye. Have a nice one. Next. All right, hello guys. Today um, I'm gonna finish my vlog around about uh, Pakistan, which is my expedition last uh, July uh, that I tried to uh, to do in in Pakistan uh, about the Spantic. Um, if I talk now, it's just because the adventure itself was completely amazing, but also like crazy dangerous, and I think. Uh, uh, people need to know what you can expect and what can happen in this kind of, uh, of country. So um, the vlog is pretty long, it's like, uh, like almost one hour. Uh, but then I just want to be very uh, precise wh when I talk. Uh, yeah, for those who are wondering, I just uh, broke my, my thumb, so I have this. Uh, but then they will take off the cast in a couple of uh, weeks. So. And I want to be rid of this because I have other travels uh, and other vlogs to make. So beginning of the trip, um, I started to uh, plan this uh, Spantic expedition uh, a couple of years uh, ago. Uh, this was not easy and when I was finally ready, then the Covid came. So I had to postpone uh, all uh, like these projects by a couple of years. And then four years later, uh, finally, I still managed to... Uh, to uh, go to Pakistan. Uh, the plan was that uh, with my friend uh, Bastien, we, we go together to the base camp and then he comes back home and then I just fly to, uh, to uh, I just go to the, to the top. Uh, that was the plan. So uh, we started uh, to meet uh, directly in uh, Istanbul, in uh, Turkey. And then we took a flight until Islamabad. Welcome to Pakistan for yes. 7,000 meters expedition. Yes! We stay one uh, night uh, or two, yeah, two nights. Uh, and then after that, we took a domestic flight to uh, Skardu. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Skardu, the adventure starts now! And then in Skardu we arrived, uh, like it was a special day, like a Muslim day, so we couldn't uh, start the trip, uh, apparently. Uh, then we decided to make uh, one uh, hike around, just like uh, to uh, acclimatate uh, our body. Welcome guys to the Mosul Rock, and look at this guys, it's just amazing. The view is gorgeous. This giant, I want to say the word, but I won't say, you know, yeah, the finger. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go there. This is the moment where we met uh, my guide Babar, and then there was also guys like Masoud and so on. So, <laughs> Alors Bastien, c'est comment? So much fun. How was it? Good. Yeah, so good. Nice. And then we are with. Uh, Babar and Mas Masoud. 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 I took an agency, like a travel agency that is organizing uh, such expeditions. Uh, the thing is that, yeah, it didn't happen as, as expected. So um, that's why I'm talking today, because I really want to say the truth. So there was a lot of positive points, but also very negative points. And uh, people need to know uh, the truth. Go, go, go! started our trip by jeep like five hours on like a very bumpy and dirty road uh, direction Alandu. Alandu is the last village in the valley and after this there is no uh, there's no communication possible there's no no uh, coverage there's nothing hey Bastien how is it going yes. Are you ready for the expedition this is the jeep 
full loaded. Full loaded, well packaged. Excited? Everybody, yes. So excited. So yeah, we are ready for uh, Arandu. Yes. Arandu, we should the have like... inhabited village. Yes. The five hours. The we should base have, camp. Base we'll camp. have five hours driving in this Jeep. Crazy road. We're going to show you this now. Yeah, yeah let's go guys. Woo! on the way to Arandu and the road is just amazing. In French we will say c'est une dinguerie. So we are just enjoying a lot. The road is crazy 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 but that's what we are searching for. first uh, camp um, and then uh, that's where I started to meet uh, other people so we had a, a group of Thai people with us and we had also a, a British expedition that was uh, starting in the same time than us so uh, yeah you start to meet the people but you know everybody is a bit uh, yeah I don't know who you are then uh, um, the first days are everybody is a bit shy, I guess. Welcome to Arandu, guys. We just had a good, uh, good time with the road. It was five hours drive, and uh, my back is just destroyed. <laughs> uh, the road was just amazing. Um, if you are scared, uh, don't go there. I just tell you, it's uh, it's not for beginners, let's say. It's for people who search. Uh, we are seeking for uh, adrenaline. Um, then we just arrived in Arandu village now, uh, which is the last point where we're gonna set up the uh, camp. And then tomorrow we will start in that direction. We will see what's happening. Wow, 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 Mr. Freaker, how is it? Super nice. Then we started the, the trip uh, the next day. Uh, we had like something like 35 porters, so it was like like an army just just for us to, uh, to uh, <laughs> bring everything uh, until the base camp. And uh, we the first day was maybe 12 12.7 kilometers if I'm correct until uh, Shogo Bransa uh, camp. So um, this was yeah the first day you know it's you know, you're always full of energy you know it's uh, blue sky and everything is amazing. Hey, good morning everybody. Good morning. How was your night, Mr. Bastian? Oh, very good. We had a good sleep in Harandu. Yeah. And now we are heading to the first camp uh, Bo Bo on the trek to the base camp. Yeah. Bono show? Yeah, something like that. And so yeah, here it's uh, 7 a.m. Yeah, and uh, 7 a.m. Yeah, we woke up at 6. We had one hour to prepare and we are exactly on time. Uh, it's uh, impressive because there was about like maybe 20, 25 people just for, for us to, to pack to the, carry the, the... Carry everything. And ladies and gentlemen, look at this amazing this la is our landscape. We go in that valley. This is the break time, Bastien. How do you feel? Ah, very good. So um, we are currently up. I'm gonna take uh, what altitude? So uh, we are at the altitude of 3,000, uh, well, 200, I think. Uh, we have walked for three and uh, three hours, 15 minutes for 11 and a half kilometers. So it's pretty good because we will arrive. Uh, well, today is like 15 uh, kilometers in total. So. Uh, that should be uh, maybe a couple of hours more and then we are good. 
And then always the uh, wonderful landscapes. We have just arrived on the camp where we're gonna spend uh, the night over there. What's the name? Shobo. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be like, it's uh, 12. So we have 12 hours to do something. And then, um, like we are like along the glacier, which is pretty, pretty nice. And over at the end, you can finally see the Spantic. The problem is that now it's cloudy, so you don't see the, the top. But that's the direction that we will uh, target. Second day, um, we went 16 kilometers uh, until Bolosho camp. This one was very tough because it started to be a bit high in altitude. And also I uh, started to have headache and then also the, <laughs> the weather was not good. My hands were freezing. So uh, yeah, when you arrive at the camp, you are like dead usually. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bastia, how do you feel? Ah, I feel very good, man. Very good? It was a rainy night, but... Uh... The, the rain has stopped and we are, we are going to the next camp. It's like 15 kilometers. 15 kilometers. They are currently packing. It's day three. Of yeah, it's so that's... Uh, we are basically, because at the beginning they were saying that uh, ah, if it rains then we stay here. So no, 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 we have to go. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, like the night was not so amazing. But uh, yeah, today 15 kilometers and then we will try to show you the best landscape that we can if the weather is good enough. We are currently on the way to the to the camp and the weather is not promising. Luckily the rain is not so so strong and uh, we we don't have too much to uh, to walk uphill. So uh, I guess uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Bastien is going to confirm uh, we did most of the path to the camp. We are going to pass a, a small lake. It's like beautiful. Uh, let's see what we That's the plan. Uh, we have already made... Uh, how many kilometers? 10? 11? 11.16 in uh, 3 hours 15 minutes. So it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. And then now we have to climb on the snow. Let's go. We have finally arrived, Ambassia. Yes. And it was a disaster. <laughs> we had uh, some rain and then uh, 16 kilometers in five hours. So, like, what? 1800 calories? And very exhausted, actually. So, uh, Bastien has a cramp on the shoulder, and me uh, have some uh, pain on the back and also hard to breathe and headache. So, uh, and uh, Bastien had some stomach issues, and then now I have stomach issues, so... Yeah, but uh, that's part of the adventure. So um, now we are finally arrived, and they are setting up the, the camp, and then we are taking a rest. How was the day? Ah, pretty good, man. Yeah, we didn't record so much today. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, we did. So, but, um, yeah, not so much, to be honest. So, but yes, it was a rainy day, a, a tough, uh, tough trek until the, the camp. Oh yeah. Uh, with, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A Funny, funny trail. Yeah, uh, but but that's it. With a steep slope and yeah, the rain. Technical, uh, the rain was really, really annoying, and uh, luckily, like uh, yeah, we took a nap. <laughs> that was very good, one hour, and then after that we had the. Uh, like we went for a walk and so on. We were discussing with the British expedition as well. And then we were eating, which was, no, first we play Uno. Yes. We played the Uno with the Thai people. The and Thai people. Plus the, the guide. And so the sun came. So, uh, no, no, yeah, it was, it was pretty nice. So 
We used the drone and then after that we ate. We had a lot of fun. We feel better. And now it's like 8.45 probably. Yes. And it's time to sleep because we are completely dead. So let's see tomorrow. Good night guys. And then the third day you go to the base camp. So it's about like 12, uh, 12 kilometers, I think. 10 or 12 kilometers uh, on a glacier. So it's pretty flat except the end, which is a nightmare because it's very, it's very steep and you are like usually just dead. So, uh, uh, and then that day the weather at the end was snowing. It was cold, uh, horrible. And then when we arrived in the base camp, Finally, we had uh, the sun. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, a new day, new adventure. Bastien, how was the night? Ah, uh, pretty good. Pretty good? Better than the last one. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we are now packing and then direction. The base camp, finally. As you can see, the sun just came now after a rainy night. Yeah. And the mood is... It's very good. Good. Man. It's good. So currently on the glacier with uh, Sabir and Hi. Ped. Ped. Yes! From Thailand. Finally from Thailand. We have to come here, it's very beautiful. Yes, uh, where? To Thailand or, or to Pakistan? <laughs> to Pakistan, Thailand. <laughs> so yeah, I used the drone and then uh, my, uh, co my colleagues, they just left me. So uh, now I uh, found another group. Uh, pretty good, we almost arrived at the base camp. i show you that later. Where are we now? We are at the base camp! Yes! Finally, we reach it. Finally look at this view guys, it's just amazing! I can say this is one of the best moments of my life! I assure you! Yes, yes, no, yes, that's yes, super yes. nice! So, so we don't see the Spawn Peak because it's uh, right behind this mountain but uh, tomorrow for Bastien we'll try to reach the Camp 1 and then see what we can do and then uh, oh, we can't be tired of this view. So uh, we, we spent 20 days here. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. We had a no, horrible weather today, but then now it's now the blue sky is finished. So uh, finally we are lucky. That's the good news of the day. And then let's hope it will last for a, a longer period. And that was the, the beginning of the of the of the trip, let's say, uh, because that was the moment where. I would spend my, most of my uh, the coming weeks uh, because you go up, you go down, you spend uh, some days to rest, etc. etc. So, All right, last video of the day, Bastien. Yeah, how is it now? Cold? Well, it's okay. We, we... No, 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 don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. If you check here, only about like zero degrees. So, it's to be honest. It's very cold, uh, and uh, and then now we will try to sleep. It's uh, what time is it now? Nine o'clock? Yes. Something like that. And then tomorrow at nine nine a.m. we will start to go to the camp one uh, because it's the last day for Bastien, so he needs to see uh, the landscape and uh, stuff like this. So yeah, we have to sleep now. It was a hard day, but then we got sun at the end, so it was pretty cool. So. Yeah, nothing else for today. Good night, guys. Then we st everything was fine. The food was amazing. They promised me, oh, you will have fresh food uh, every time. And I was like, oh, come on, what do you mean by fresh? Yeah, they were not kidding. They were really brought the chickens that they were like killing the same day. The same with the goat. When we arrived in base camp, they, they cut the, like they killed the, the goat and then we had fresh meat. Uh, for like for a long time so they, they didn't lie about this the organization was amazing uh, we had like a 
photos for the tent they were taking care so uh, to be honest until that point nothing to complain it was just perfect but then uh, Bastien uh, left because he had to, to go back to France and uh, the next day it was the Thai group with the leader expedition that left so at the end it's only my guide Babar and uh, the, the chef the one that is cooking this is the end where I say bye bye to Bastien Bastien ah, my friend what a trip we had yeah. that was amazing so fantastic Bastien needs to come back to the Arandu so uh, if you have something to say say it now yeah this trip was so cool it's amazing so incredible the landscape the, the environment the, <laughs> the way, experience the weather was bad so the, we friend. were not no. we'll, we'll we'll come back for we'll 8000 meters again. we'll do it <laughs> good morning guys today was the day where bastien left sadly so uh, now i'm just alone and uh, with the some pakistani guys and then the british expedition so uh, yeah i'm coming it's okay yeah, I'm talking to the camera! <laughs> we had a bad weather, like those last days, so we had to wait a lot. Uh, now finally it starts to be like uh, more clear. So this afternoon we'll try to go to Camp 1, which is uh, something that I really, really um, expect. Uh, other than that, um, you know, like in the tent now, it's super hot, like something like 40... 42 degrees so uh, yeah um, that's the update uh, we eat a lot uh, no headache at the moment everything is fine so I will show you um, the ascension of uh, camp one later today if as they say inshallah and if we go <laughs> Today, 10th of July, there's a moment where I lose my Thai people and I lose Ali as well and Masood. Everybody's leaving. It's only me now with uh, Babar, my guide, and Shabir, my uh, my uh, uh, chef. So it's very frustrating. You see behind the weather is still very bad. I've been waiting for a couple of days now and uh, it's frustrating to see that you cannot uh, you cannot climb yesterday we went to 4700 meters and then went down just for acclimatization but uh, fuck i really want to go to camp one two and three and uh, maybe summit so it's hard to be patient but i have no no other choice and now the thai people and ali are going down to the valley and then uh, they will go back to samabad that's it for today uh, the leader expedition gave me another French guy that I was like, who, why, why you give me that? And he said, no, 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 we, uh, like that, uh, because we share the, the climbing uh, permit. And I was like, okay. And then, uh, finally, I, I end up with him and then with a guy of my team that is going to be his guide. And then I have my guide. So for the logistic, it changed a bit. So I was a bit sad, uh, but th there was nothing I could, I could say. So as you can see, it's time to pack for Camp 1. The, the reason is that uh, we will go today after lunch. And then the plan is to uh, mount the tent and drop all the equipment there and then go down. So uh, yeah, I have uh, technically 14 kilos. That's a lot, but uh, that's the, the weight um, if you want to survive <laughs> there. And tomorrow I will carry the rest. So uh, let's see. And then first day we start to climb uh, to the camp one. Then the weather is bad and we go down. Next day. We go up, we set up my tent. All right, guys, we are at like 4,900 meters. It's pretty impressive. It's very exhausting and we don't have so much air, but uh, we still need two hours to reach the camp one. Let's go. And then 
at that time, uh, I say, okay, give me the snow bar that, that uh, we took so uh, we can put my tent. And then my guy was like, oh, fuck, I forgot them in the base camp. And I was like, Pfft. well, okay, luckily, uh, I, I'm like very uh, cautious. So I took some, uh, some uh, ice anchors uh, just, just in case. So I managed to make something with my, uh, with my tent. Plus we found some stones, so we managed to secure the tent. But that was the beginning of, uh, <laughs> of, the, of the wrong story, I would say. Uh, so we just let the tent and we let some equipment, then we went down. So we are currently in camp one where I put my, my tent. Uh, we didn't have any anchors, so we had to MacGyver or something. And here I believe it was the top, but the top is probably in the clouds. It's okay. Uh, now there's absolutely no wind, so it's spectacular view. Uh, really, really nice. So um, yeah, good shot. Two hours, forty-two minutes. Uh, Five thousand altitude. Very good. So I have to be honest and show you the dark side. Uh, we came back from Camp One, and I'm just so tired because of headache. My body is okay, but the headache is absolutely horrible and. I, you don't see it here, but I really, really burn my face. So uh, time to sleep. It's maybe eight o'clock, but I'm dead. So tomorrow rest day. Good night, guys. And then the next day we start the, the final climb. So I had a heavy backpack because a lot of equ equipment. And you, ne you never know, you know, uh, what to bring and what to not bring. And then we climb. And then uh, in parallel, there was the British expedition that was also climbing. So we all met on the top of the, of the camp one at like 5,100 uh, 5, meters of altitude. Um, and then we took the, the, the first night. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are the 12th, I guess. Yeah, 12th. Merde. 12th of uh, July and we finally go to camp one that we have already set up but then we're gonna sleep and we are well charged I'm with uh, Youssef another French guy and uh, we have our two guides we have another expedition that is uh, coming soon the weather is fantastic and I hope to show you a better view on the top <laughs> in uh, camp one so uh, as you can see uh, finally we see the top at the end it looks like uh, k2 so uh, it's super nice it's very bright so i need to put back this so you will definitely see my hand holding my uh, phone but it's okay and i need to present you one guy guys which is augustin 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 yeah augustin uh, half Canadian, half French. I don't know who the fuck you are. <laughs> so yeah, we have a lot of uh, common points, so it's gonna be nice. That's their camp. The, he is with the British expedition. And then uh, we're gonna enjoy the, the beautiful uh, scenery in Camp One. And then the mess started the next day. So what we had to do is that we, uh, the exp British expedition, they say, oh, we're going to wake up at six o'clock and we're going to leave at seven because uh, when it's in the, the night and very early morning, the snow is very um, uh, like icy. So it's perfect condition. And then when the sun is up, it starts to melt and then you end up like walking in a soup, which is like catastrophic. So, um, but then my guide was like, no, nah, it's okay. Like, let them go. Like, we can, we are faster. We will go uh, a bit later. So I wake up at, uh, I wake up at uh, six when they were leaving at six. And then I was ready at seven. 
And then um, at seven, it started to be uh, like already uh, like too late, uh, but I was ready. And then I had to wait for my guide. And that's, the, that's where the mess started because then I was waiting and then I saw that it took some time. So then I started to go a bit further just to give some pressure like, hey man, let's go, uh, I'm waiting. Leaving camp one for direction camp two, a bit late, but and the logistic is not what I expected at all. Uh, let's do our best. And I had to wait one and a half hour, one and a half hour. So that was complex uh, to, to treat because then I came back and I was like, hey, what the fuck? Like, let's go. And then I see his shoes and I see like, no, no way, man. And he was struggling to put his crampons. And I was like, man, you have automatic crampons for semi-automatic shoes, which means that the front, the front is not like on the, you know, like there's, there's no hook to hold. And he was like, oh no, it's okay. I, I'm used to that. And, so, and then I take his foot and then I just do, and then this stay in my hand. And then, oh, Oh fuck, what do we do? And I said, well, luckily, luckily, I had both. I had the adapters. Uh, so then um, at 5,000 meters, I was changing the crampons of my guide. And then it was like, oh yeah, you're a superhero. Thank you. I said, yeah, come on, I, we are a team now, but that's not normal. That's not the goal of a guide, uh, of, of, a, uh, of a client to take care of the guide. So I was like, what a mess. Yeah, yeah. And then you pass, you pass this one. Oh, the other. Bon, j'en ai ma claque. Uh, ça fait une heure que je les attends les autres. Uh, le guide, j'ai dû lui faire ses crampons. Puis en plus, il a pas les bons crampons. Uh, c'est un peu scandaleux. La logistique, c'est de la merde. Donc, uh, on est le 13 juillet à cette heure-ci. Je ne sais pas si j'atteindrai le sommet uh, dans les prochains jours parce que c'est catastrophique. Donc voilà, dégoûté. And then we start. To, to climb and we start to just to walk in a soup like it was uh, ma smashed uh, ice it, it was it was very hard and then we cross the british expedition then i say the story that what just happened and then uh, the guys were like oh what the fuck what the fuck <laughs> so, uh, okay we, we talk when we are at the base camp and then, the thing is that uh, yeah we crossed and then they say oh you should have uh, started like uh, two hours ago it was super good conditions and i said i know but it's not my fault so what could i do and uh, we start climbing until a certain point where we meet the the high porters of the British expedition. And the high porters, they start to talk with my guide and then they say, hey man, the snow is too bad. We have like a ridge, it's very dangerous. We don't have the fixed ropes. So we let the equipment and then we are, we back. We are back to the base camp and then we'll try it in, in a couple of days. And then my guide was like, no, no, it's okay. We continue, continue. So we continue until the point where they let the equipment and then uh, we were like, okay, well, but then there's nothing we can do. So uh, let's go back to camp one. So apparently we cannot go to camp two because it's too dangerous and they, don't, and they need fixed rope and they don't have the fixed rope. So what a mess. So we started too late, then the snow is melting, so it's too dangerous to go to camp two. So we have to go back. So sad story again. And then the, the French guy that was with me, Yusuf, he said, oh no, come on, I have just one tent, then I will put my, uh, I will put my tent uh, here. And I said, fuck, now we split the group, what the fuck? And I was like, okay, Baba, then let's put your tent 
and then uh, like that uh, we we can we can sleep here and he opened his bag and he was like oh i forgot the tent and i was like man how can you forget six kilos that was the plan the plan was we put my tent in camp one your tent in camp two and my tent in camp three and then submit and, and we go down so that that was the plan but no this uh, didn't happen so Yusuf stays in this in the middle between camp one and camp two and then I go back to uh, uh, camp one so uh, what a mess uh, now my guide is going down and then I have to uh, go to he's going down to base camp I go down to camp one to pick the tent to bring it close to camp two and uh, he goes to pick a tent that will, he will put in camp two and my tent will be to camp three. It's a horrible, the logistic, and I'm very uh, pissed. So what a mess. And then uh, I take a rest. They go down to base camp to pick the tent and me and sleep. And me, I take my uh, tent to reach Yusuf. Because then imagine you get a heart attack uh, in the mountain. It's not so, something that you really want. And if you are alone, you are in big shit. So then I made the second trip to reach him. So yeah, my guide uh, left me in camp one. They went down to uh, base camp and then tomorrow they will pick the tent for the camp two. So me in the meantime, I'm tired to stay here. So I will go to camp two, which is where we were this morning. So I have all the time that I want. It's uh, 3.30 p.m. Uh, it's a bit hot but uh, the view is uh, fantastic big big avalanche uh, in direct life of between camp one and camp two at 5200 meters of altitude uh, and uh, i had to pick my tent at camp one to bring it to camp two so that's how I finished my horrible day <laughs> alone in my tent making uh, this uh, uh, boiling water. It's uh, negative now, very exhausted. And then tomorrow, like I made a camp between camp one and camp two. Tomorrow, let's hope that we can go to camp two, but they will be late. So I will see. Good night, everybody. We sleep. Next day, they arrive super late. Uh, and then we started to take the ridge with very bad snow. Hello guys, today camp two, that's the objective, which is right over there. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of plan uh, changed. Uh, the night was not amazing uh, and uh, uh, maybe like some stomach problems. Uh, that's what, what happens when you eat uh, dry, dry uh, tech food. Uh, but yeah, then uh, we have this uh, uh, camp too. We have a window of four days uh, with the weather. So let's hope uh, it will work. Inshallah, as they say. <laughs> Stressful as fuck. But uh, yeah, uh, I, will, uh, I will skip the, the, the detail. And then we arrive almost in camp two. And then we, we set up the, the camp two. arrived in uh, camp two i don't see shit with this bright everywhere we just take a small break kayum is uh Levi leading us safety rope and it's followed by youssef and then baba at the end closing um, spectacular view it's 12 degrees positive amazing day one and a half let's say uh, then the guides they say okay you and Yusuf you stay here and me and Kayum the other guide we go down to pick your tent we sleep there and tomorrow we meet and then we all go to uh, to camp 3 Bon, bah bien arrivé au camp 2 on vient d'installer euh, nos deux tentes les guides vont redescendre euh, 
euh, aucun intermédiaire qu'on a fait. Kayoum, are you okay? Okay. Very nice. Baba, Baba, uh, uh, Baba influencer. We just set up the tent and we have this uh, massive mountain to climb. I'm a bit scared, but the guys are confident. Uh, Yous Youssef, are you confident? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dream team. Yeah, dream team. With yeah. the dream team, we can go everywhere. So, uh, yeah, so far so good. Uh, Youssef and me, we stay here, we rest. And the two guys, they go back to pick uh, the last stand plus the food. You need to know one thing, guys, is that when you are in a high altitude camp, the, the only thing that you need to do is boiling water. And you boil a lot of water because this is what you need. And there is nothing else to do. So that's the perfect combination. And then they leave. I use my drone that I crashed, by the way, uh, but I managed to, uh, to catch it. And then the... I start to to ask Yusuf, uh, yeah, how will you manage in camp uh, in camp three with a tent? And then he say, uh, camp three, and I'm like, yeah, camp three uh, between now and the summit. Oh, because there is a camp three. I say yes. What the fuck? You uh, you, you don't know that is a camp three? And he was like, oh no, it's not my job to know how many camps are in camp th in a uh, Spantic. Yeah, yes, it is. That's the only thing, you need to know how many camps, you need to know the altitude, you need to know the distance between them uh, and how many, that's the minimum without the equipment. So I was like, okay, fuck, I, I'm in a, with a bunch of tourists, it's, it's pathetic. And then the next day, the people, they come, uh, the people, sorry, uh, the Baba and Kayum, they, they, they come. <laughs> They arrive at 10 o'clock and they say, oh, Don't worry, uh, you know, we go. And I was like, What, uh, what do you mean? It's 10 o'clock, it's melting, it's super hot. Yeah, but don't worry, uh, I'll go first and then you, you rest. And I was like, ah, Okay, so you, you're gonna put the, the fixed ropes? And he was like, uh, Oh, I forgot the fixed ropes. I said, What the fuck? Like in the base camp? But then go back there and pick them because I'm not gonna climb without the fixed ropes. And he said, no, but they are in Skardu. And oh, in Skardu, this is the place where they showed me 200 meters of fixed rope. And this is exactly what we needed now. So, uh, and they forgot them. I was like, fuck it. Then you go first, I will look at you, uh, but I'm not climbing because you don't know where is the path. It seems to be uh, somewhere here. All right, guys, so this is the moment where how two guys go to camp three, which is up there. So they're going to put the tent and then we're going to look at them, take a rest day and then tomorrow try to go to camp three. We are a bit scared with Youssef because our two guides went to camp three and I'm following with that to uh, check on them. And then with the zoom, I can uh, I can see that and uh, they are taking some risk, so it's a bit, a bit, a bit um, uh, dangerous. Uh, I hope they know what they are doing, but uh, we here we stress a bit. Then I spend my day to look at them, you know, with my big uh, reflex camera, and then it was uh, it was horrible because you could see where is the path, and then they started to go in the other direction. They started to walk under the serax, you know, like the this huge ice blocks uh, that is dangerous and then after they pass some uh, ice bridge that were like melting and so on 
it was it it was crazy crazy dangerous but they came back they only went to halfway they came down uh dead dead that that day i understand and i was like okay what do we do and then baba tell me like tomorrow we climb and i said at what time i said ah, 5 a.m i was like, you 5 a.m you are tired as hell no no, no don't worry i will manage so next day we wake up at four o'clock with Yusuf and at five o'clock with Yusuf we are ready and the two guys they were still in their sleeping bag uh, and then like, oh yeah look, can you boil water for me please uh, with my gas that I paid so I was like yes of course I'm your slave I will I will do this that's not my job but at that moment I'm like I got pity I'm like okay he made an effort uh, the day before then I have to take care of that uh, and then we start to pack and I said to I said to uh, Yusuf, pack your tent because you will need it in camp three. And then crazy idea from uh, Babar, he said, no, 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 keep your tent here, and we will sleep. Uh, we will all sleep in the tent of Yale. And I went, oh, 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 what? My tent is just made for two people. We are four. Yeah, but it's okay. We, we will squeeze. I like no, but come on. And then I got furious. I said, hey man, I didn't pay so much money to live in this situation. First of all, sleeping at 6,300 meters, it's already super hard. There's no, there's no comfort and you have headache and so on. And then now you add me like uh, two more people that were not in my plan. What the fuck? I tried to negotiate for like more than two hours. It didn't work. I had no choice. Then we start to go and then the mess start again. Uh, the Wim Hof, Wim Hof method. All right, guys, we are currently on the way to Camp 3. Uh, with Youssef, we woke up at 4 a.m. and then we left at, three, uh, at uh, 7. So three hours later, which is not our fault. But if I'm first, there's a reason. <laughs> so I think they probably hate us now, but uh, that's not what we expected. Uh, yeah, finally, today is cloudy, so it's not hot. There's no wind. Conditions are perfect. The snow is very good. And then today the goal is to climb this, go around, and then set up the camp three uh, at the the last slope. Baba, how how are you? I am fine. Good, good, okay. good, good, good. It's snowfall. Yeah, we are currently with snowfall now, so uh, I hope it will still be okay. We climb, we start to climb, and after 100 meters, then Babar said, Oh, yeah, we're a bit tired, so go first. And we're like, What the fuck? You don't understand that, you know, the, the, in, in the word guide, there's the verb to guide, which is to show the path. So apparently, you don't know this, uh, this, this job. But okay, okay, I take my, my chance. Uh, I go first because apparently I become the, the leader of this expedition. So uh, I start to go. It was very, very uh, uh, like uh, steep, and uh, luckily I was using the same steps that they used the day before. Then of course we start to go, you know, in zigzag. I fall in a crevasse, you know, all my, uh, all my, uh, you know, up to up to here. Uh, it's very exhausting to get out of a crevasse, uh, especially at this altitude. So, um, yeah, that was a mess. And then we reached 6,000 meters. This is where they let my tent the previous day. So in direct life of the, between camp two and camp three, it's uh, hard to breathe. We are at 6,000 meters. And uh, now the sun is uh, burning. So I hope we can hurry up because it's very hot. And then we have the choice. Uh, and I say, okay, Baba, either we go in front of this giant mushroom, which is like maybe, I don't know, 80 degrees uh, slow, and we don't have fixed rope. Either we go, we go around, it's longer, but it's safer. So what should we do? And then Baba, yeah, we can go straight. And I was like, man, it was not a question. It was, that was a sarcasm. Of course we don't go there. We have to go around. So we go around. And the problem is that after we picked the tent, there was no steps. So then I start to go first, then I get tired, then Yusuf made a good job, you know, uh, 
but then get tired after. So we were really struggling at that moment. You are above 6,000 meters, guys. That's very, very difficult. And then we reach, uh, like uh, we are on the traverse, and I, I ask Babar, hey, Babar, uh, after, is it flat? And he looked at me and he was like, mm, maybe. And I was like, what do you mean, maybe? He said, yes or no? And I was like, whoa, Babar, how many, how many times have you climbed this mountain? And then he said, uh, he showed me like, um, uh, two times, and I was like, no, man, you mean, no, this is three, but you mean like two times? Yeah, yeah, two times. But man, you are like just like me. You are just like a, a tourist. You're not a guide. So uh, me, it's my first time. So I, I, I fell in a trap. I didn't get a guide. I got uh, like uh, another person that was not a guide, definitely. And then I say, when is the when is the last time that you climbed this mountain? And he said, in 208. And I said, what, before Jesus Christ or what? He said, you mean 2008? Oh yeah, yeah 2008. Say, yeah, 15 years ago, 15 years ago. Like the mountain can change in 15 years. You know, the glacier they move and so on. And I was like, but what do you do? Like, you're not a guy. So in the winter, what do you do? Say, oh, me, I'm organizing uh, weddings. What? <laughs> Now we talk, so you're not a guide, you are organizing uh, weddings. So now my life is in, in between your hands. This is not uh, normal at all. So and at that moment I was like, okay, but then I really need to uh, um, take my, uh, my life in my hands and then decide for myself because it's, it's thought to be crazy. Then we continue and I was leading and suddenly like the, the weather changed. It was cloudy, but like we had fog as well. It was cold. And then I was walking first and suddenly I arrived in front of a cliff. So I was like, whoa, 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 fuck. And I say, Baba, there's a, there's a cliff here. So apparently the path is not here. So where, where is the path? And I don't know why maybe because of exhaustion or something like that. He took an Italian accent. He looked at in the, in the air, he take off the glasses and he said, I don't know. And I was like, of course, I should, I should expect this answer. And he said, there are two ways, an easy way if you go down here and a difficult way if you go up. <laughs> So 6,300 and we are stuck because we have a fucking bullshit. God. What do we do now? And I was like, yeah, easy way if we go down, but we have to go up. It doesn't make sense. Then I said to Yusuf, okay, let's wait five minutes. Maybe the fog will disappear. And after five minutes, the fog leave. And then I'm like, man, if we go down, we go down to the hell. We go down where you have crevasse, glaciers, that's not at all the path. And he said, ah, then we go up. I said, yeah, uh, <laughs> bravo, congratulations. So we go up. And at that moment, uh, like, I'm pissed. I'm pissed. Uh, I just want to give up with them. I, I don't have competent people. So it's, it's very difficult mentally. And then we continue. We walk, we walk. You want water, Ayum? Water? Water, we are lost, we are lost. And then crazy moment, I, 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 um, Baba is first, and then I have a, like I'm second, Yusuf is uh, behind me, and then we walk and I hear, no, and I turn and I see that Yusuf lost his sleeping bag and the sleeping bag goes into the slope, like, take it up, take it up, take it up, take it up, and slide until the crevasse, and then bye bye forever. And then I see Yusuf, no, man, fuck. And I see that, and I'm like, Putain, man. rule number one never put your sleeping bag outside because this is the only thing that can save you if shit happen. So that's, I don't know, I, I don't understand why he didn't put it there. And then the thing is that 
I see that he was uh, like really nervous about what what to do now. And I look at him and say, man, it's okay. You're lucky. I have my uh, summit suit. So I have my sleeping bag and my summit suit. So I can, oh, you would do that for me? And I say, yeah, because now we are together. So I have no, no, no you know, uh, uh, no choice and I'm not going to let you die. It's, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but this, in the same time, in the morning, this guy was making joke and they're like, uh, oh, you, uh, uh, you, it's super hot. I agree. It was super hot during those days and it took some space in my bag. And he was like, oh, come on. Now you have no volume for the rest. Uh, this is ridiculous. But then at the end, this is what saved his life. So I was like, ha. You know, like uh, sometimes it's nice to be uh, more cautious than uh, not enough. Then we continue. And then 10 minutes later, I start to have my nose bleeding. And I was like, fuck, that, uh, this story now. And I say, uh, okay, guys, when there's blood rule, uh, the golden rule is that best, sec best case scenario, you go down. Worst case scenario, you stay. But for sure, you don't continue. And guess what, guys? Babar. No, 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 a mission. We have a mission. Summit, summit. And I was like, man, that's my life. You know, that's my health. You have to take care of my health, man. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. We can push. And I look at Yusuf and I say, this guy is dangerous. He doesn't know like uh, anything uh, about health as well. So then I, I say, man, that's my tent. I stop here. You, you do what you want, but me, I stop here. And, I, and then we put the tent and then I give my, uh, my equipment, uh, the tent, the night was horrible. We got snow, uh, snowfall, uh, no food because we, everybody were tired and my lips were burning because of the, the previous days. I got sunburn on my tongue and my lips and that was a complete nightmare. And then the next day, of course, the, it started to be a, a better weather. And uh, the problem is that uh, in my mind, I was like, no, no, it, we can't make it. It's too dangerous. Shit will happen again. Uh, so no, I've seen how is it. It's, no, it, there's no way. So I say, we go back to base camp. If there's a new weather window, we can try again. If not, I give up. I reach uh, 6,300 meters. That's my record. Then. Uh, I'm fine with that. My my life uh, in in the balance of your hands, it's I can't anymore. Youssef, how do you feel after having lost your sleeping bag? Good night, huh? Good night. Je passe une bonne nuit. Franchement. So yeah, in direct of Camp Three, we go down for acclimatization because we are just dead. Then we start to go down, and then by my, uh, you know, by Maggi, I start to see a lot of uh, a lot of um, tents in Camp Two, and then I saw the high altitude portals of the British expedition that were climbing up, and I was like, "Wow, okay, let's wait." They come to us exactly at the point where we let uh, the tent, you know, uh, uh, the previous days, um, in the in the middle. And then uh, we start discussing and they say, oh yeah, th there's a weather window of two days. So uh, we take our chance. Today they are in camp two, tomorrow camp three, and then the night after camp four. And I come and I say, whoa, whoa, whoa guys, can I come with you, please? Can, can, I, can I change the team and be with you? I, I promise I will be just the last one, but uh, I will just follow you and that's it. And he said, um, do you have fixed rope? Because the thing is that the British expedition had 700 meters and they counted on my 300 meters or 200 plus my other ropes to, uh, to finish the, the fixed ropes. And I say, yes, I have 50 meters and my guide has 50 meters. And this high altitude porter said, okay, give me everything, my friend, and I will fix them. And then tomorrow you can use, the, use them as well. And I say, Baba, give the fixed rope. And Baba, no, 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 fist ro uh, rope uh, uh, expedition. Uh, Baba, this is fucking safety. 
give me the rope. So I took the rope and I give it to the, to the high altitude reporter. And then, thank you, my friend, and so on. I was furious, furious at that moment. And then I start to go down. I arrived like 20 minutes before my, my, my guide. And then there was the British expedition way welcoming me. They believed that I probably reached the, the peak and I was on my way down, which was not the case. So there was this embarrassing situation where I arrived and then they were like almost clapping. And then I started to be on the knees and then I was crying. I was like, those guys are not guides. They are crazy. They are dangerous and so on. Then I started to get the attention of all the group and they were like, whoa, this is very serious. And I, then I saw the leader of the British expedition going out. Uh, and then he said, uh, I asked him, say, tell me, I I'm ready to do whatever you want, but I want to be with you for safety. And he was like, yeah, no problem. You can come with us tomorrow. So um, his name was uh, David and he's uh, the leader of uh, Jack the Globe expeditions. Uh, so yeah, if I knew that this would exist, I would definitely uh, take that because they have uh, European standards in terms of safety. They have a guide that is European that has been like you know, on Everest and uh, all the 8,000 meters and so on. And then they have uh, high altitude portals and then their leader speak English. So I mean, of course it's more expensive, but at the end you pay what you get for. And I saw this because then I got a cheaper option, but then my life was in the balance. So it was, uh, it was very, uh, very dangerous. And then the next day, so yeah, of course my guide comes back and I say, I say, you from now, you are not my guide anymore. You are my high altitude porter. Okay. So I give you a bag, you carry it and that's it. I don't want your opinion. Next day, uh, like we had to wake up. I asked British Expedition, when should I be ready? Ah, yeah, five o'clock. We wake up at four and I, we live at five. So I said to Baba, to Baba, okay, man, let's live at four and let's live at uh, five. And Baba, no, it's okay, no, yeah, so we, we, can, we can go at seven, seven thirty. And I was like, do whatever you want, I go with them, you know. At 4.59, I was like this, you know, that was crazy. And so excited, but then I was the only one who got, uh, who got the acclimatization because the rest started from base camp. So they were very tired during that day. And this time we had the fixed rope. So for me, it was like way easier than uh, without any, any rope. Direct level of camp two and we're going to camp three today with this amazing weather. We have to climb this. Let's meet on the top. Oh, voilà, je me suis, je me suis uh, raccroché au, à l'expédition britannique. Et là, on va monter au camp 3. Donc là, je me sens un peu plus en confiance plutôt qu'avec mon guide. Donc euh, voilà, la montée là derrière, elle est quand même assez hard. On est à 5500 mètres d'altitude. Ça va être tendu. J'ai mes lèvres qui sont complètement gercées. Mais bon, no pain, no gain, comme ils disent en anglais. Which is something that is very helpful when you are with fixed rope because you just have to pull up there every time up and then it makes your life way, way easier. Look at the view guys and the slope. So yeah. 4,000, no, 5,800, uh, almost 6,000. Let's go. We 
reached camp three and uh, at that time uh, I got uh, a fight because the thing is that initially Yusuf, when we went down, Yusuf said that he gives up because he has no sleeping bag. And then when I reached camp three, I say, okay, man, uh, Baba reached me uh, sometime after and I said to Baba, hey man, let's just go a bit further at the end of the plateau. So like that tomorrow we have less to climb. And then he said, no, no, we have to wait for uh, Yusuf. And I was like, huh? But he said he comes back. And then Baba, no, but I decided to give my sleeping bag to him so uh, he can come with us. And then I will sleep with the other guy in the same sleeping bag. And I was like, what the hell? Seriously, first of all, you are my guide. So you should have the best night possible in case of if shit happen, you have to take care of me. And then now you give everything to a guy that didn't sign with us. He did, he's not in our team. So I say, stop that. And I was like, ah, this is my responsibility. And I say, you, you talking about responsibility? Wow, wow, wow. Impressive. I say, you know what? Okay, we stay here. Then that's fine. Uh, I will manage. And then the next day we start at... Uh, we had to start at uh, midnight 30. And that's the only day we were on time because we started at midnight 22 because the British expedition was making a lot of noise. Uh, then we woke up earlier and then we started on time. And then midnight 30, time for going to the summit. We are at 6,400 meters. It was difficult to sleep and breathe. So now I just want touch the top and then go down as fast as possible because I'm tired. <laughs> Let's go. Then we start to hike. Uh, sorry, we, we start, uh, you know, like to be ready. And I didn't know if I should use my, uh, my, my uh, summit suit because it was, it was very hot at that place, but you never know. And I say, ah, okay, well, we, ne we, we never know. Let's try. And jackpot, we walk 200 meters and as soon as we're on the plateau, paf, 45 kilometers of wind, minus 15 degrees, and a lot of people were freezing. Then we walk, we walk, it was, it was exhausting. And then suddenly it was very dark around me. And I look at Baba and there was, Baba, no light. And I say, Baba, can you turn on your, your, your head, uh, headlight? And he said, oh no, sorry, no battery. And I was like, well, of course, of course. <laughs> what did I expect? So then I go first to make the, the, the path. And then we catch up the British expedition. And then we start to cross one of the guys and that was going down. And he said, hey, what's happening? He said, oh, yeah, I have diarrhea, I have to give up. So he gives up with a one high altitude porter. And then we continue to climb. And then puff, we see another uh, uh, client that just give up because she was having hallucinations and, and so on. So that's the problem when you, with the lack of acclimatization, it's not their fault. It's just that uh, that was the short window, uh, the weather window, uh, and then she gave up. So then at the end you are like, fuck, it, it's real now. We are like a 6,600 meters, seven. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very dangerous. Then we start climbing and it's, of course, it starts to be like more and more like, uh, chaotic. It's very hard, no oxygen is, is very difficult. And then when we reach something like 6,700, uh, then the high altitude reporters, they say, okay, we are tired, can you go first? And then Baba, oh, Baba, I have to admit, that day he has been uh, better than the other day because he was carrying my backpack. Of course, it was only seven kilos, but it was all the electronics. And at that, that, that altitude, I was like, oh, finally, you helped me, that's super nice. And then at that moment, 6,700 meters, then he overtake everybody and he start to make the path. And I say, finally, that's what I want. Well, that's what I expect from you, you know, Sh show us the path, show us who you are.
keep the trace to the top. Let's go. And he started to make the pass for 10 minutes. And then after you get exhausted because there was a lot of powder and it was, uh, it was difficult. So yeah, we have been changing every time. And then at 6,000, like 800, 800 meters, then we, we, st we stopped there. And then the leader of the British expedition start to be like, okay guys, let's put the fixed rope now. Uh, and then there was maybe 100 meters of fixed rope, but this will last uh, uh, some time. And then uh, I hear Yusuf like, ah, I don't know if I should, maybe I should give up now. And I was like, why? And say, oh, man, I don't feel my toes, I don't feel my fingers, I'm frozen. And I say, yeah, then you should go down immediately. And then Baba was like, no, 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 submit, mission, mission, you can do it. And I was like, man, let him decide. Maybe he's like dying. And then you try to push, you, you are just crazy. And, and at that moment, you know, uh, Yusuf take off his goggles and then the wind that was 45 kilometers, something like that, just blow up. His goggles and the goggles fall into the on the on the slope and I take it up, take it up, take it up, and then I was like, I was like, fuck man, you're not you're not lucky with uh, <laughs> with that, and um, then he said, that then yeah, it's time to go down, and in one minute he took exchanged the bag with uh, Kayum and then they went down, so uh, uh, yeah, then uh, I just continue with uh, with Baba and the rest of the team, and then finally uh, we. We arrive like 50 meters before the, the top. And guys, I'm I'm not I'm not lying. There was 50 meters on like almost flat uh, slope. It took me 15 minutes to make those 50 meters. You make one step and then, and then one more step and then, whoa, 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 whoa. So it was, it was crazy. And then I saw that some of the British expedition already uh, arrived and it was like, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then when finally I, I arrived, wow, you have, guys, you have a lot of emotions because finally the pain is, is gone. Uh, you will not climb uh, you know, higher. I start to be on the knees, then I start crying and so on. And then Baba arrived. Hey, hey, take a picture with me and Pakistani flag. And I was like, man, please let me enjoy the two minutes. Let me enjoy my, this is my moment, you know. I don't ask you anything. I just want to be with myself, you know. And then he was like, oh, okay, okay. And then he was waiting like, like that. And I was like, fuck, until the end, it will be a mess. And um, and then we finally, like, then I take my videos, I make the picture, his picture, and then we arrive at 10 a.m. after eight and a half hours of uh, climb. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was very exhausting. Uh, the sun was nice, uh, the view was incredible, uh, as you can imagine. We stayed half an hour and then we go down. Meters. The view is amazing. I'm so tired. Eight and a half hours. Uh, just so exhausting. And my, minus 15 degrees. What a day! On the way down, uh, we came back to Camp 3, and the goal was to go down to Camp 2. 
sleep and then next day base camp. Uh, but in camp three, everybody was completely dead. They were tired uh, as hell. Uh, but me, uh, my mission was like, uh, now uh, I'm gone. I'm gone. With, I'm done with that. So um, I go down. And I had, uh, I still had the energy. Um, so I went down alone in camp two. That was. Uh, I was not happy about that. I would have preferred that someone else come but with me. But the weather started to be very bad. Uh, like I knew that the clouds start to come and we don't know about tomorrow. That was the end of the window and nobody wanted to follow me. And I feel that it's safer to go down now where you still have a clear visibility than in the fog with snowfall and uh, you don't know where you put your feet. Uh, so then I go down alone. It took me two and a half hours. To, uh, to go down and when I reached my tent uh, oh my god it was amazing I slept 10 hours like a baby uh, while I remember at, uh, in count three I didn't sleep at all it was there was a uh, too much uh, like a uh, lack of oxygen that was uh, terrible uh, and then the next day uh, like in the night I heard the snowfall and in the next day what woke me up was the screams of the other teams going down in the fog after snowfall uh, and uh, it was, I heard like, are you okay? Oh, I fell in the crevasse. It was, it was very scary. And I didn't see shit. I, I didn't see it more than three meters. So um, it took them more than four hours to go down from camp three to camp two. So I was glad about my choice. Uh, and then uh, when the rest of my team uh, came, then we took everything and then we, I remember I had 22 kilos. That was uh, a lot. Uh, and then we, we go down to uh, camp one. And then on the way I meet Augustin. Augustin was a French guy in the British expedition. And we became like good friends during the, this adventure. And then he said, hey, Yael, uh, what's your plan after? And I was like, oh, me, uh, today, base camp. And tomorrow, Scardu. Tomorrow, Scardu. I have 40 kilometers to go down to Arandu, five hours car. I don't care. Uh, and then uh, it means that after tomorrow, I'm not in this country anymore. Even though it's a beautiful country, I was tired. I just wanted to go. Uh, and uh, my plan was to go to Thailand to visit one of the Thai uh, guys that I met at the beginning of the adventure. So, um, so I tell him that. And then he say, okay, can I come with you? And I was like, yeah, sure, just come. He said, yeah, because the, the rest of the team is tired. So they're gonna sleep in camp uh, one. And then the next day is going to be sleeping in base camp and then a rest day and then three days to go down. So if I go with you, I save one week. And, I, and uh, he had a wedding or something like that in uh, Tunisia. And I was like, yeah, sure, just, just, just come, no problem. It's going to be more, more fun with you than, uh, than alone with, with Baba. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we go down and then we meet in uh, base camp. In base camp, I arrived and I got the medal and, and everything. So th that was cool. All right, guys, I'm just arrived now. And Shabil behind gave me this amazing uh, uh, necklace. And then uh, I came with my uh, with my pal, altitude porter. They are, everybody is like this. So uh, yeah, and I have my favorite juice, the mango juice. That the, the, the chef uh, knew that I love that. So my mission is completed and then now tomorrow the plan is to go to uh, Arando which is 40 kilometers. My lips are fucking dead. <laughs> and then my first thing is that uh, find me two porters and I leave tomorrow. And then they were like the, my, the chef, you know, the, who was cooking for me. No, come on, relax tomorrow, rest days. And no, 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 man. Now I have to leave. I have to leave. Uh, uh, I need to. And then I, I spend the evening to pack my bag to uh, try to make it, uh, you know, like uh, not so heavy and then give to the porter and so on. Um, and then the next day we leave at six, uh, six o'clock. Uh, the night was horrible. I was so excited. I said, fuck tomorrow, I'm coming back to civilization. It's going to be so cool. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we leave at 6 a.m. Oh. Okay, guys, it was a pleasure <laughs> to meet you. It was a pleasure. And then uh, now with uh, Baba and Augustine, we are going to Arandu, which is 42 kilometers in one day. 12 kilos, mine is 16, and Baba is 20 kilos. Let's go. Augustin, alors t'es comment? T'es prêt là? Je suis prêt, je suis prêt. Les chaud patates. Okay, let's go. All right. And then we walk down for 13 hours. 
uh, it was a nightmare. Like we didn't eat, uh, it was painful on the feet, uh, then it started raining, uh, a horrible time. And when I say horrible, I say horrible. Et voilà, et c'est qui qui finit euh, 42, par 42 km euh, sous la pluie Et bah c'est nous, voilà. Alors Augustin, on attend qui là Baba Le guide Le guide, ouais. Qui nous guide pas, puisque du coup, bah, nous on l'a trouvé nous-mêmes notre chemin là. <rire> voilà, allez, encore 10 km. Currently, walking from base camp until Arandu. And uh, it took me, uh, it took us uh, 10 and a half hours to make 32 kilometers. We are dead and we still have 10 more. So uh, let's uh, hope that we will arrive alive. But my feet are destroyed, very tired, but at least we are back to civilization today. Yes. Wow. Finally, we arrived after four, 13 hours and 40.8 kilometers. I'll be chilling when I see the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we are fucking dead. It's horrible. <laughs> and then, uh, when we arrived in Arandu, then we were like very like tired. Of course, the, all the kids they go around you. Uh, you know, they are very curious, which is nice. And then when we arrive, we ask uh, Baba. We say, okay, I called the leader of the expedition. The cars are ready. So now we go to the car direction hotel uh, Skardu. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Hotel here, food, dinner, and tomorrow Skardu. And I was like, no, 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 no. No, today, today, Skardu. Yeah, 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 tomorrow. His English was very bad, so it was uh, confusing. He was me, uh, confusing uh, me and you, the hundreds and thousands, uh, uh, pills and fields, etc., etc. So I was like... Um, and then after that, uh, when um, uh, he started to tell us that we are going to sleep here, then Augustin was like, uh, Baba, stop your bullshit! We have to go now! No dinner, just car and then scaru. Okay, 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 relax. And then we just went to eat in the hotel, like at the camp uh, in Arandu. And it's like that we finish the adventure. Look, oh, the malade, smile a little bit, damn. And then we took the five hours uh, car, and it's it was horrible because you are tired, and then the the road is like this. You have cliff, and then cliff on the other side. And then the driver is like that. And then he look at you and say, oh, sir, how was your trip? Amazing. I say, look at the road, man, crazy man. And you're like, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that was, that was tough. And then when we arrived in uh, Skardu, then at the hotel, oh my God, you take a shower after 21 days. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So nice shower and then back to internet, back to civilization. And then uh, at that moment, my first thing was to find a flight ticket to Thailand. So, and then I found one for the next day because we found our domestic flight to Islamabad with Augustine. So we take the next, we arrive at two o'clock. I went to sleep at four o'clock at 11 a.m. I was in the plane. So that was a very, very quick. Um, I say bye bye to the to a Babar and and uh, the other. Et voilà, c'est ainsi que se termine notre trip. C'était un plaisir. And then uh, we take the plane to Istanbul. We arrive, and then the leader of the expedition welcomed me. He gave us the cap, he gave us the certificate and so on. We made it, And then I talked to him. I say, man, come on, be realistic. You didn't give me a guide. He said, oh yeah, I gave you a guide. And the thing that I discovered that this guy was not a guide, but he was his uncle. So uh, I was like, was it a family business or not? So yes. 
the leader tells me, yeah, but he was a high altitude porter uh, 20 years ago on Nanga Parbat. So he reached 7,000 meters. They say, yeah, but a high altitude porter is not a guide. A high altitude porter, you just carry something and that's it. The guide uh, needs to take care of you, the health, and then really, uh, like, he has to do his best for you. So uh, we had like a strong explanation and I say, man, why you didn't give him crampons? And he said, yeah, I gave him, but he didn't, didn't want to use them and so on. So he was kind of like on my side, which was weird because he's responsible of that. So uh, that's why I have to tell you these guys, I, uh, I had a good connection with, with, with this leader, but I didn't like the fact uh, that uh, he didn't give me a proper guide. So luckily I managed to reach the top and come back uh, alive thanks to my experience uh, in the past. Uh, so yeah, otherwise that would have been a, like a big, big, big uh, mess. So uh, I talk about this and I say that, uh, yeah, when you send me someone who hasn't been only two times on a mountain, that's not what it should be. So uh, uh, I told him that in order to him uh, to improve for his company and so on. Uh, and then uh, I'm like, uh, fuck, never again, you know. And then at the end he was like, oh, if you climb 8,000 meters, uh, you just call me. And I was like, man, you didn't understand. Like, you have to improve a lot before I come back. So, uh, yeah, I got uh, shocked by this. Uh, so my conclusion, what I want to say is that um, Pakistani people are very friendly, very nice. I got a ve very good connection with, with every, like, uh, all of them. Uh, they are yeah, super friendly, but in terms of competencies some people might not be as what they should so uh, and the thing that you never know in advance what can it be so maybe it was the only company that was like it maybe most of them are like that and then you should take like a uh, um, company like uh, based in uh, Europe or USA for example uh, maybe I was not just just not lucky uh, again I'm not criticizing the Pakistan. I'm just, I'm just sad about the story that kind of happened to me because I think, uh, like, if I would have had better, like, more talented people, I would have enjoyed it way more. And I paid, I paid, but apparently I didn't pay enough to have this, so uh, I learned from that. But um, again, my goal is to try to, uh, to. Uh, uh, I hope that maybe some Pakistani agencies will see this video and they will be like, okay, we have to step, step up. Uh, we need to provide the, the best for the, for the customers. Otherwise, uh, they won't come. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That was a crazy story about Spantic. See you guys.